Tato is definitely unpredictable, and I do think he can take a, a map or two off Viper. I don't think Viper can just, like, raffle stomp him. At least I hope not. Well, welcome everybody to the grand finals of the Masters of Arena 5 tournament. It's been a long grind to get there, but we now have our two finalists spawning here in the north of the map. In the yellow trunks, we have Tyrant the Viper as the Byzantines. And in the southwest of the map, deleting his walls, we have Tato, also for Tyrant, as the Blue Malians. So have we got civs or not? So we have, uh, yeah, Malians versus Byzantines. So we have an uh, Age of Kings civilization versus an African Kingdom civilization. So, like, in the subsequent games, Tato cannot pick another African Kingdom civilization, and Viper cannot pick another uh, Age of Kings civilization. So I think that's how that works out. But yes, Finch is the only person to take a map off of Viper this tournament. But I think Tato is certainly someone who is capable of doing that. Of course, Tato and Viper are on the same team. They play together all the time. And is that a lame? Is that a lame coming out from Tato? Wait, I can't tell. One, two, three, four. And Viper has three sheep chilling. Maybe one sheep got lamed somehow? I'm not quite sure. But regardless, let's take a look at the maps here. Viper, definitely not the greatest of maps. Yeah, his gold is kind of back, but he has a very exposed base. Three sides he can be attacked from. Just feels very open. Very forward stone. Forward second gold. Forward second stone. And this gold is, like, technically exposed, or at least it's a little safer. But if I were Viper, I would definitely try to sort of control this, like, north side of the map. Because you got a stone here, you got two golds, and then you have one of the uh, neutral stones there as well. But in general, very open map for Viper. I would not be surprised if he did like a 1TC fast imp. Uh, that's very common as Byzantines. So yeah, definitely something this map lends itself towards. But if we look at Mr. Tato's map... Um, forward berries isn't the end of the world. That's a very forward and exposed goal. That is not a great goal if you're Tato. However, oh yeah, there is two sheep. So yes, uh, Tato did lame two of Viper's sheep. So Tato has plus two sheep and Viper has minus two sheep. But yeah, the thing is Tato has two back stones and two back golds, including one of the neutral golds. And if you saw my, uh, casting for the Stark versus Tato series, that just goes to show how important getting those neutral golds in the back of your base can be on a map like Arena. But yeah, Tato definitely has the map advantage in my opinion, just because he's got all the back resources and all the space he could ever need. But of course, uh, he'll probably need that since Viper is definitely the better player straight up. Taking a look at- oh no! Oh no! Oh, that's so unfortunate. Pulling an Ornley right there, losing a villager to the boar is Tato. That is not how you want to start your game. Already a villager behind. That's just really unfortunate for him. But just looking at the civs here... Hmm, I would probably give the civ advantage to the Byzantines slightly. Just because they, uh... Like, to me, they're a bit more flexible in that they're strong at, like, every stage of the game in Arena. They can get that fast Imperial Age, they have the excellent monks. Pulling an horn loose sounds dirty. <laughs> oh, you know it. <laughs> oh, I didn't know that was a command. But yeah, Byzantines are 
definitely stronger in the Imperial Age. Like, yeah, both civilizations are quote-unquote flexible, but the Byzantines just strike me as a lot more powerful as they have the cheap trash units. They have, you know, all that gold that they can spend on things like, I don't know, gunpowder, monks, bombard cannons, maybe cataphracts, if we can dream. <laughs> no idea. Yeah, there is no Civ Draft. But we have Loom coming out from the Viper, interestingly enough, already. But then he's making another Villager, what? This is kind of odd for Viper to just go get Loom right away. Yeah, I think Grandis is right on that one. At least from what I can tell. And also, one Villager on Gold. And he keeps on making another villager, so he'll be going up on at least 27 population. Whereas we see Tato going up on the 26 population. Would be 27 if he didn't lose that villager. But yeah, Viper already getting Loom. Does he just really fear the Trush from Tato? I think he might. Viper definitely playing, playing a little nervous here. Well, not like nervous, but defensively, not taking any risks. Wow, Viper going to be going up on 29 population with Loom. So that's going to be like 30 population without... Wait, okay, there we go. He's finally advancing to the Feudal Age. But this is interesting. Yeah, you guys are saying Fast Imp in chat. I was just about to say that. Fast Imp definitely seems to be on the cards for Viper. He's already been gathering gold for a while. So yeah, I think we'll be seeing as fast an Imp from him as possible. Take that monk advantage. And then maybe go into like gunpowder or trebs or something. 30 plus 2 plus 2. Yeah, that sounds about right. Of course, if you are unaware, the Byzantines, I believe, have a 33% cheaper Imperial Age? Yes. So their Imperial Age costs 667 food and 536 gold, which is huge if you want to go for as fast an Imperial Age as possible. Already a ton of farms down for Viper. Fast Imp definitely seems to be on the cards, where we see a much more standard opening from Tato going up on the 27 population. Well, what would be 27 if he didn't lose the villager. Market Blacksmith, he will likely be going into Monks and then maybe like a boom behind it. But yeah. Market Blacksmith from Viper as well. It's just going to be a little bit slower in getting up, but with a larger economy. Especially since he has one villager advantage. Things are really only going to start heating up once these players hit the Castle Age. No horse collar from Tato, or horse collar from Tato. Get double bit axe from Viper. Up, oh, epic anime battles. Oh man, whose whose power level is over nine thousand? I don't know. Uh, looks like Viper with his Viper hacks able to get the the epic anime kill onto that scout cavalry. Feels bad, man. If you're Tato, I mean, I guess it feels good, man. If you're Viper. Double bit X. Let's see, nine on wood for Tato. Guess he knows that he can do one less on wood since he's Malians. Viper's selling stone as well, interestingly enough. So, like, 100,000% he's going for this fast Imperial Age. Just throwing down these farms right by the mill, just try not to waste any sort of villager efficiency. Anyway, we see Castle Age coming in from Tato. Will it be the monks? Will it be the boom? Find out next week on another exciting episode of Warren Lose Casting. Just kidding. Two monasteries coming right down from Tato, as well as Bosaw and a town center. So I'd say Tato is doing about as safe and standard as possible. You know, double monastery with a good monk civ like the Malians. In case you guys did not know, Malians have an almost full monk tech tree, only missing illumination. Which is kind of like, you know, a pretty big one, but certainly not 
a huge tech to miss. But yeah, double bunks on the way. Getting the second TC and Bowsaw, he will very likely be getting a third town center shortly thereafter. Of course, we should be seeing a university monastery from the Viper, and we do. And he'll just try to hang on until he can get to the Imperial Age. If you look at Viper's resources right now, I mean, it's certainly... He's not close to clicking up just yet. But he will be in a couple minutes. Just kind of tickling away at these walls. And wow. Wait. Oh. Yeah, that was a weird spectator overlay bug. Where it said I was on the Viper's POV, but it had the uh, the Malian UI. So it, it made me think I was on Tat... Or I was on Tato, but it said I was on the Viper. I don't know, something weird. But Viper already on the way to the Imperial Age. 17 minutes 35 clicking up. That's just Byzantine things, man. But the question is going to be, what is Viper going to do with his Imperial Age? Because rushing up to the next age doesn't really mean anything if you don't, you know, make something happen out of it. Overly went full Ornlu. Oh god. But obviously, Tato has, you know, a reasonable monk advantage right now. Four military to two. So he will be able to take all the relics. Some Wololos coming in. Tato getting fervor very quickly, interestingly enough. I guess trying to zoom out on the map and take all the relics. Three relics in the south. Looks like Viper will be able to get at least one, maybe two relics. These relic spawns are actually really good for Viper. He has two, like, right next to his base. One that's, like, within a screen's distance of a gate. And, yeah, that's just really good relic spawns for Viper. Which kind of sort of makes up for the fact that uh, his map is nowhere near as good as Tato's. Both players now getting Atonement. Uh, very important on Arena, as you're just going to want to convert each other's monks. Viper going to maybe try to get a pick in. Well, this monk is really lonely. This monk's going to die. Wow, really nice game sense here from the Viper. Um, lag at an awkward time. The scout's little sword coming in. Will he get the conversion off? No, Viper going to get away scot-free on that one. Just nice pick off from him. He has not lost a single unit this game and has the relic lead over his opponent who went for the double monastery. Now we have block printing and chemistry coming in, as well as a siege workshop that would definitely lend itself towards going, uh, like, bombard cans. Oh, is he going to lose another monk? No, he will not. Tato going to escape with that monk. But right now, Viper has the monk edge, somehow. Oh, is this scout going to get converted? Scout conversion resistance, go! Nope, not quite. Sanctity really helping Tato out right there. One HP left on this monk, but he will get the scout. But yeah, Viper definitely uh, in a yes. pretty good position. Oh, looks like they had a bit of a pause. But Fervor and Sanctity as well coming in for Viper, just getting all the monk techs he'll need. Already has block printing. So he can certainly convert Tato's monks further away than uh, vice versa. Maybe trying to get it like a villager conversion or something. Yeah, Tato's definitely going to need to retreat with these villagers. Thankfully for him, though, he does have two back golds he can take, so it's not really the end of the world. Now I see another monastery coming down from the Viper. He's going full monk production. All day, every day. I assume we'll see some Bombard Cannons on the way, and we do. And now, interestingly enough, we see a Light Cab switch coming in from Tato. Has two stables, getting a third one on the way, as well as a third Monastery. Also doing something smart here, taking his relics and then moving them to a back Monastery, so it doesn't, you know, accidentally uh, die right away and he loses his relics. Also, each player has two relics. Am I missing something? Where's the last relic? There were three here, on this side. There was one by Viper's base, and there was one right here. I don't know, I'm going crazy. Oh, never mind. Tato grabbed it, he was just transporting it. Duh. But Bombard Cannon's starting to work away on this wall here for Tato. 
And the question is, will Viper see these light cav incoming? Well, I mean, physically he has a nice long line of sight with these monks, but can he predict that it's incoming? Because the light cav will swoop in and kill the monks with relative ease. Now garrisoning his villagers, doesn't want any to get converted for no reason. But the question is, what is the reaction time going to be on all these light cav coming in from Tato? Also getting heresy, importantly? That's certainly worthwhile taking. Oh no! Tato getting his scout converted! I mean, the scout's gonna rush in. Is it gonna get a villager kill or something? Regardless, it's going to see the two stables and the, t the town center, so he knows. He knows. Where did Tato get 1k5 gold? Well, he's the Malian, so he has the free gold mining upgrade. And of course, he was investing a lot of gold early on to make the uh, monks. But here we are. Here's the big fight of this game. Light Cav are completely unupgraded, but that doesn't really matter in this situation. They're trying to get in as fast as they can, trying to save the TC as well. Oh my god, that is all the Light Cav going down for Tato! He only got his first unit kill right now! Oh, this is disastrous for Tato. Of course, the Byzantine monks heal faster, 50% uh, faster as their team bonus, now starting to get some spearmen out. Of course, Byzantines to get those cheaper spearmen, but this is just an awful start for Tato, still in the Castle Age, 3 military to 15 of his opponent. Yes, he has like a 30 villager lead, but that doesn't matter on Arena, <laughs> as, as I well know. Yeah, just nowhere near enough light cab. You need to, I think, outnumber the monks, like, two to one, in terms of, like, light cab to monks. At least in my experience. But this TC will fall to the Bombard Cannons. Not enough repairs coming in. Not really the end of the world for Tato. Does have two town centers and has a large villager advantage. Now Pikemen and Crossbowmen coming in for the Viper. Or, sorry, Crossbowmen's coming in for Tato, Halberdier coming in for the Viper. So Tato going with another tech switch. Three archery ranges coming down. Of course, the Malians do have those cheaper buildings, making tech switches a bit easier. This peasant strike is incoming. Peasants, what are you doing? This is not this is not what you want to be doing, peasantry. You're not gonna kill that bombard cannon, you do one damage. I'm not sure if you know, villagers, but this is this is not the the, the way. Villagers, why? We hardly knew ye. Pato just trying to marshal more of an army, but he just doesn't have the resources. Trying to get these crossbowmen in, but there's already, what, three, four bombard cannons out for the Viper? And a ton of halves that can just close the distance? I don't think that's going to work. And he's losing buildings. He's losing production. He does have a few monks here. Going to need to get some good conversions off. Let's see if the conversions for Viper are going to be better, though. He has a significant monk advantage. He's going to get some conversions, at least one on the Bombard Cannon. That could be big. And it just seems like not enough for Tato here. Well, maybe. If he has, a, if he sends, like, one villager to repair that Bombard Cannon, never mind, never mind. Yeah, it just seems like the numbers are not in Tato's favor here. Not that many crossbowmen, only with the plus one attack and range upgrade. Not even killing that many. I think the heresy was a good choice for Tato, but he just did not take a good engagement with his light cav. That's GG. It's pretty over. That just goes to show that villager count means very little on Arena. So yeah, very nice fast imp play from the Viper. He had the better monk upgrades, he had block printing, he had illumination and theocracy. Yeah, Byzantine healing. So good, man. Honestly, I think a little bit underrated as a team bonus. Makes your monks a lot better in these sort of situations. But well played from Viper. Pretty cut and dry game one. Yeah, Tato with well, every resource collected more of except for the gold. But that, that gold is what's important here.